It's time. Hello, Andrea here, and I'm again with my friend Dante Del Vecchio, who's been very kind to host me again uh, at Pinider. Thank you very much, Dante. Buonasera, Andrea. Hello, everybody. Nice to, hear, to be here again talking about what this time? What do you want to know? What do you want to grab from me this time? Well, I was thinking. Uh, first, I wanted to talk about uh, the Pineda Arco in uh, color oak because uh, it's actually my, my favorite. I think I told this I told this multiple times, and Dante answered me. Well, why uh, shouldn't we talk about um, uh, the entire materials of the pen or the processes? Uh, through which the pens are created. So well, now I'm here with many colorful materials, many pens, and we will have a little bit technical uh, conversation with uh, our grand, uh, grandmaster, pen grandmaster. Okay? So this means that the grandmaster has to give, to put to you at your service 30 years of experience. Yes. Actually, nearly 35. I know, I know. Getting slowly, slowly older. <laughs> it doesn't look bad. Okay, let's go on. Let's okay. go on. Which is your first material that is interesting to talk about uh, fountain pens, about pens in general? Well, I would like to approach this on a chronological order, if you agree. As you can see, there are many materials, and uh, we have here celluloid yes sure which uh, correct me if i'm wrong it was the first material you worked with uh, when you started your career as a pen maker am i right yeah i'm famous to be to be able to reintroduce the beauty of the celluloid after 40 years of oblivion so the market completely forgot the celluloid and i i i, I built my brand based on the, the rediscovery of the celluloid and the beauty of collectible pens that in 1988 was not so um, uh, known. Say most of the pens were for actual use, much more than now, but for collectible, uh, the pen of the, uh, your uh, grandfather, uh, that has a certain fashion was completely forgotten at that time. So I uh, rediscovered the celluloid went to, to find the material that who stopped making the material itself and asked them to restart the celluloid and in your in front of you is the first sample set i received from mazzucchelli in 1988 to choose from the code they were able to create and there is a very you know unique you know example a reptile that was uh, my second pen actually from 1991 as a model and the material that has generated the pen well i can see many gorgeous looking uh, colorful patterns uh, it seems like uh, you can do everything with uh, with celluloid in celluloid we have to say two things you know yeah. very very important the beauty of the celluloid for the pen is for sure tradition but it's also the fact that it's unbreakable and in 1930 was extremely important because the pen were, were a tool of daily use and uh, is uh, as a range nearly of endless color. But I was just looking at uh, the stunning uh, red time, am I right? Yes. This, can you tell me something about the pattern, uh, about how uh, celluloid... First of all, uh, you know, uh, this was uh, my second pen. The first one was the classic. And uh, the material, this is a very uh, old technique. The material was wrapped, not uh, carved from a solid block. In other words, if you take the original block, and you see from the front or from the side, is a different you know effect that comes to the pen if you cut from a solid block but if i take the material and they wrap this will come absolutely the same color in 1920 all the major maker uh, parker Schaeffer, and you know and uh, and all the others uh, and were used to wrap the material because labor cost was not so expensive and they were able to save a lot of material plus the curing process that is the time that the pen has to dry before you know drilling and finishing was much much shorter 
Usually it takes around one month of curing pro uh, pro uh, process for a celluloid pen. Even 45 days, depending on what condition the celluloid maker delivers you the material. Usually we call it that is called you know the left you know humidity in the block. That is the percentage of alcohol still existing in the block. To be uh, workable has to be less than one percent. But even at that time, like now, you know the maker of material were a little tricky. To, yeah. to speed the, the production, they were shipping us material with higher, you know, percent of alcohol. This, this makes the manufacturing difficult, the drying more difficult, and most of all, we can have shrinkage in the material. I was about to it's ask. It's easy for everybody that has uh, likes, you know, um, uh, celluloid pen or vintage pen. When you find an old pen with a loose pen, this means the material was shrinking. Don't forget that one of the biggest problems on the other hand of the circuit was the crystallization. That uh, with the time, if the, some kind of material are too high, and we don't know this because the material maker never tells you uh, what is the exact component they put inside, they can cause you know, the crystallization of the celluloid. I understand that I came across uh, uh, some pens, some celluloid pens, uh, exactly the same manufacturer, exactly the same material, they were both celluloid. One was completely destroyed by crystallization, the other one was perfect. It happened, it happened to me in the Voyager collection that uh, many pens are still here in my collection is in perfect shape and, and many pens we had to to replace completely because the pen was unusable, just break, you know, by, by looking, you know, just crystallize and uh, get back to dust, I would have to say. Well, so, uh, cellulite, let, let's say that nowadays it's not very cost effective, so to speak, because of uh, everything we have. Cellulite, I think, is still uh, the most beautiful material in pen, but, uh, you know, incredible high cost and uh, difficult to get the material, uh, time-wise, you know, quantities, and even, you know, in my point of view, the, the colors are not those anymore of the old ones. Yeah. Uh, plus, uh, the uh, development of new resins and uh, even injection molding, we are able uh, many times to give uh, uh, colors and effect uh, uh, extremely interesting and beautiful. Yes. Nearly like celluloid, nearly like celluloid. Well, you said nearly like celluloid. Actually, when I first seen, when I first saw the um, Pinader Arco, the, um, actually the Arco Oak, uh, I was wondering, is this celluloid or is this resin? Well, actually, I had to ask you, because uh, I, I wasn't sure, because it actually it, it doesn't look, it, I think it looks, it could be celluloid. Argo is, 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 is a classical resin, uh, the, the, the effect is the one of the celluloid that I fight it, you know, with my experience to create the translucent color of the celluloid. Well, before talking about uh, the Pinader Arco, <coughs> I was curious because I saw these uh, uh, fancy roads and I wanted to ask you, you, say, you just said it's lava. lava Can you yeah. tell me something more about that and how you managed to reach this uh, kind of uh, color combination? So when I launched uh, the, the, the Homo sapiens, you know, I was already thinking to have a, develop, a development, so I immediately started to work in some colorful effect that uh, can move from lava then you know to other colors then yes. uh, you know you know that the life goes different and I took with me my sample color of lava okay but can I ask you if you plan to do anything with this kind of material because I think it's one of my favorites well, lava is old Love is old. It's, uh, it's, a, it's good material, uh -huh. but I find if I have to do something, we have to do something innovative. I don't like to copy myself, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if there's something I know about you, is that you never do things twice. Never. Yeah, like a real artist. But okay, so back to the back to the arco. It's called the arco because it's a tribute, I can say, to the old uh, uh, arco cellular collections, right? But how do you manage to make this uh, arrow effect? 
effect, this arc effect. Th this is what you mean. And this is extremely visible. Yes. Extremely visible. You know that uh, there are many, you know, uh, materials that are called uh, stratification materials. This is an, ex an example of a material that is uh, a stratification material. If you cut in this way, you will have exactly like I've done in the uh, kit weapon, a pen with, par uh, with parallel lines. If you see from one side, if you see from the front, you see only one color or the other color. Depends on, on how many colors you put in the stratification. If you look, the arco, the arco has an arco effect yes. based on the position of the material. So my uh, creativity, let's to say your you know, expertise, I sent to the maker material this schematics to ask him to cut the material not in a straight way, but in a corner of four degrees. Then when we, I was turning the pen, I was creating the arc effect. So what do we what do we have here? This is a, a number, the first pen I made in United, uh, that are the gemstone collection, uh, the Grand de Bellez gemstone collection, that is uh, a new kind of material that is uh, a compound of resin and uh, uh, marble, around 50% of, of the marble, to create again a new and heavier pen. You can see here. What is difficult in injection with the pen is not, the pen is uh, quite easy to make if you have a good mold, but uh, it's difficult to create effect mar marbleization because uh, when you mix two colors in a bowl, I see red and uh, uh, white, you have pink. Yes. Because the color gets diluted. To avoid this, we have to, to put in the same, you know, um, in the same uh, uh, bowl color that are enemies, like water and oil. So you have an example, you see the next uh, uh, material is the um, uh, uh, avatar you are, where you have all the compounds that generate the blue color. You know that uh, if you make an injection molding pen, we are not going to work with the solid material, but with granulation. Uh, these are the colors that mix together you can easily see at least uh, four different, you know, chips. Okay. That is blue, uh, light blue, crystal, and white. I'll show you. This is, yes. I found them all. Yes, light blue, blue, crystal, and white. So, so these are different materials that don't mix together. When they are melted at 200 degrees temperature, they fuse, they can generate the material, and strongly joined together to become nearly unbreakable. Okay. Nearly unbreakable, extremely resistant. So this way, the color, the colors don't mix. So we have... Uh, so they mix, but they lose the shades yes. and, and the effect. This effect are much more visible in the marble, you know, in the uh, in marble compound. That is again another mixture, but this is not unbreakable. Yeah, it's still strong, but not unbreakable. I think this is uh, and one of the key point of the marketing of the avatar was the, the pension to resist nearly everything because it's a daily pen. Here we give more relevance to the effect of the color. Even to the touch, it feels uh, very smooth. Uh, it feels uh, silky. It doesn't feel sleek, so you don't run the risk of uh, dropping it. You know, this line is actually out of production in Pinide. Uh -huh. We have sold out of the entire the first batch, and we will be replaced soon by a, a, ray, a new pen early next year. And I will invite you this time to visit me, you know, 
and we have a big event for real? presentation of this new material that I uh, again invented with an incredible story behind. And where this will take place? Here in Pineda? In Pineda. Mm -hmm. uh, you, we, we will host you. Will be a personal meeting because uh, I want to introduce the people. You know the next stage of the material that you will see is again is a data discovery. I am thrilled. I'm looking forward to seeing. So, but can you tell me something about this kind of material? This, this is quite, you know, uh, my one of my oldest uh, plates of uh, color uh, choice. This was made many years ago. Is uh, just uh, you know a selection of. Uh, uh, of uh, uh, acrylic resin, you know, uh, where we can I can pick different color combination, and uh, this is uh, a resin to be done by turning machine, so it's a solid block, no more or less like the arco material. And uh, you can see here we have a little history of the same three colors in three different ways. Yes. Now this is a marble color in a modern way where the the chips are quite small, while in the celluloid uh, celluloid was very different in the past. This is a stratification. This is a, a wash. You know, it's called a washed. You know, technique. Like they get mixed up? They get mixed up with, uh, in, in, uh, in, a, in a liquid uh, environment and they are able to create uh, this uh, color. These are, again, you can see enemy color together. Yes, yes. So they don't merge. So the, the, what, what it was known in the, in the, in the, uh, in the, in the market by making this kind of colors, I put it into a, a, a injection molding. The same technique, but injection molding. That's very interesting. And this is one of my, what I say, many, you know, ideas I get, you know, to, uh, to, to bring into the pen market. But anyway, I was thinking, we have talked uh, about uh, alcohol material, we have talked about uh, stratification, we have talked about the four degrees, we have uh, touched the um, topic of colors. But I would like to know, uh, I know perfectly this one, of course, and uh, I know this model, the blue bee, which is... Uh, this is the arco, see? the brown arco, this is the blue bee. And we have a couple of uh, new colors on, 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 on the go. Okay, that's what I wanted to ask you. What, what kind of colors will they be? Are you allowed to tell me? Uh, yes, I am allowed because this will be released in a couple of months. Wow. I would define it uh, some with a kind of greenish hue with this white. This is called the desert beetle. Desert beetle. And uh, the next one will be the Firestone. Wow. This is, uh, these are just to complete. Probably we'll, I will add a new one, a uh, fifth color. I have already, you know, in my, you know, uh, creative area. But uh, then I, I think I will stop with the art. I don't want to overload the, the, the market of, of art to colors. So I would like to show it again. So if you're not have a canal in your collection, you know, go fast because then we, they will land. I know, I know, that's why I already own this uh, and I soon have this one. And uh, again, this is the Desert Beetle and, uh, and the Firestone. Firestone. They will be released uh, one in the beginning of 2021 and probably the other at the end. Okay. Thank you very much, Dante. I think we covered everything about uh, old uh, and new materials, uh, the pros and cons of every material, the history and the uh, inspiration behind them. I hope this was useful uh, in uh, your fountain pen uh, ramblings and uh, researches. And again, thank you and see you next time. Thank you so much for your attention. This is my experience in uh, turning a gesture molding pen, different materials. I hope you enjoyed. See you again soon. Ciao. Bye bye.